Hi and welcome everyone, it's book review time today and it's time for my penultimate review for SBFB08 where I've been looking at titles for Team Bookborn. If you want to find out more about SBFB08 and the titles involved in Team Bookborn's allocation, I'll leave some links in the description box below to Bookborn's video where she introduces the team who are going to be helping her out and the titles that they are allocated and there'll also be a link to Mark Lawrence's SBFB08 website where you can follow the competition as it progresses seeing reviews for every title as they come out and finding out first which titles have progressed and which have been cut from the competition. With that said, let's go and find out a bit more about A Phantom's Vengeance by Marco Mitzi. So A Phantom's Vengeance by Marco Mitzi is set amidst the backdrop of a civil war. The king's brother is leading an uprising and he's set his sights on the north, which is where the capital is and of course therefore the seat of the king. Danio is a soldier in the king's army who returns to the capital triumphant after what will become known as the Battle of the Swamps and pretty much as soon as he sets foot in the capital he stumbles upon a conspiracy that will change his life forever. So where to start with this one? I guess for transparency I'll start with two kind of related points. First of those is that I very rarely DNF a book. I think I'm a bit too stubborn once I start a book to admit defeat and to put it down. However, at around the 40% mark I did DNF A Phantom's Vengeance. And secondly, to help me express my reasons for deciding not to finish this book, I will include some mild spoilers in this video. I don't normally do that, all of my review videos are spoiler free, but for this one I feel it is necessary just to have some mild spoilers. And I won't include character names or specific points in the story that things happen to help keep the spoilers as mild as possible. And I will also put timestamps for the spoilers in the video description, so if you want to avoid the spoilers you can skip those when they come up. So in terms of the book itself I obviously can't give a review of the overall plot of the story or things like character development because there just isn't enough time you do need the full book to be able to get a good picture on those because of course things are happening and characters are still being developed right up until the end of the story. So I was first drawn to this title because of the sinister plot that's mentioned in the synopsis. I do quite like a bit of mystery and intrigue now and then in a fantasy book and I was hoping here for some clever twists and turns focused around an intricate plot and a nice bit of scheming as part of a storyline. Now obviously I can't say for sure if this comes up again in the remainder of the book that I didn't read but certainly by the time I put it down at 40% the sinister plot seemed to be over and it was serving just as a catalyst to the story rather than being an integral part of the storyline itself. Now looking at it again I think I maybe did read more into that in the synopsis than there actually was because it does say there that he stumbles upon a treasonous plot which leads to various things including a quest for vengeance which of course is mirrored in the title of the book itself and I think that quest for vengeance is the key part of the story rather than anything to do specifically with this conspiracy. That aside, one of the other things that I did quite like in the opening part of the book is the element of family because you've got a soldier who's returning from war and he's reunited with his family, he's got a pregnant wife and a young daughter and rather than it just being celebration on both sides of that it does touch more on the emotional side of it and the fear that's involved on both sides the fear of a loved one going off to war and also the fear of going off to war and leaving your loved ones behind and on both sides of that the fear of course is around whether you're going to be reunited at the end of it and then another thing that I do like about a fantasy book that involves war is the camaraderie and the banter you get from soldiers who are spending a lot of time living in each other's pockets. And again, that's something that's done quite well here. We don't see too much of it in the opening because we don't spend a vast amount of time in the kind of army setting, but there is the promise of more of that to come in the second half of the book. So because I chose to DNF this book at the 40% mark, it shouldn't really come as much of a surprise that most of my overriding thoughts on this stray to the negative rather than the positive side. And I would say that there are two main elements that can bind to convince me to put this book down, one of those relating to the writing and the other one to the storytelling. On the writing side, I did feel that the book on the whole was quite well put together. There were no real issues that I had with the writing except for a couple of little niggles and overall I felt that the flow of the writing did go quite nicely. A couple of little niggles that I did have 
were quite impactful for me though just because of the way that I read. So first of all there were a few instances where I had to skip back a couple of pages to double check something because I came across something that sounded a bit contradictory to me and I just wanted to check whether it was contradictory or whether I'd misread something previously so that obviously broke up the flow as I was reading and kind of similar to that there were a few little sections where I had to reread a sentence several times just to try and get my head around what was being said something didn't make sense or the wording of it was particularly strange and I just had to try and mull it over in my head a few times before I could figure out what was going on there were a couple of those where I shared little passages with friends on Discord to see if they could get their head around it or to see if it was just something that I wasn't looking at it the right way. And whenever I did that, they were left scratching their heads as well. So it wasn't just me. There were just some odd little bits where it wasn't the sentence structure necessarily. It was the actual words that were being used. It was what was being said that just didn't seem to fit with the rest of the sentence. So bearing in mind that, as I say, the rest of the writing was actually pretty decent. Those really stood out to me because they were just really out of keeping with the rest of the book. Now, the second part of the writing that I want to talk about, and also the storytelling element of it as well, are the bits that are going to include mild spoilers. So as I say, I'm going to try to be intentionally vague with this so I don't give too much away, but I do apologise that there are slight spoilers ahead. Once again, I will put timestamps for the spoilers in the description box below, so they will show up as chapters in the progress bar at the bottom of the video. Skip ahead now to the end of spoilers if you don't want to hear these. Okay, so the other little niggle that I really had with the writing happened right at the start of the book and that's probably why it sticks out to me maybe a little bit more because if you are going to have something, that's exactly the wrong place. I want something at the start of the book that's really going to intrigue me, really going to suck me in and some writing that I'm really going to get on with because if you don't have that, it obviously makes it a bit more difficult for me at least to get into the book. So with this one we start off in a battle scene and I do quite like a fantasy battle. The vast majority of my reading is pretty much epic fantasy so there's a lot of battle scenes that I do come across and I guess I'm kind of used to a style with that where you have short sharp sentences, uh, maybe it's a little bit light on the description because in fantasy description can be quite wordy and you don't want that kind of disrupting the flow and slowing down the scene when you're in the middle of a battle. I want it tense and action packed and the writing style really helps with that. Here though, it was pretty much the exact opposite of that. I got some longer sentences, I got some almost flowery description of what was going on and it just didn't seem right to me. It didn't seem like I was in a battle. It didn't seem to me like there was any real tension. It wasn't fast and frenetic. There were no real high stakes in that battle scene opening. Now, the spoiler part of this is that it did turn out to be a dream. And in hindsight, with that information, I can maybe appreciate a bit more the writing style of it, where it's a slower, almost dreamlike kind of scene that's being painted. The problem for me is that you don't find out it's a dream sequence until the end of the battle scene and for me it's too late by then because I've already read a few pages of this battle scene as a live piece of action and I've already started to become slightly frustrated with the writing style as a result. Now the other main thing that really put me off about this book is the storytelling and it revolves around one particular scene. So with this one there will be a little bit more of the specifics but again I'm going to try and keep it vague in terms of actual uh, character names and whereabouts in the storyline it happens. But you have a face off between the hero and the villain and at one point the hero is overwhelmed, the villain has the opportunity for the killing blow and you've got that tired old trope where the villain decides that he's going to divulge the plan and give the hero some vital information. I think the wording involved in this one was along the lines of I might as well tell you the plan because last I checked dead men are the quiet kind. So essentially because dead men tell no tales I might as well give you all of the information, tell you who's involved, fill in those gaps that you haven't already filled in for yourself. Of course then something happens and the tables are turned, the hero doesn't die and he now has this extra information, but then you have a similar kind of situation the other way around. So now the villain has been overpowered and I think to give a little bit of credit where it's due, the hero had stepped away to pick up a fallen sword and whilst he's doing that the villain starts taunting him, saying how he's 
he's going to rape the hero's wife and rape the hero's daughter who he describes as being what six eight years old and the way it reads or the way it read to me kind of made it seem like the hero was just standing over the villain waiting for him to finish talking before finishing him off and it just seemed completely wrong to me ignoring the words used the actual way that the scene played out just didn't seem right to me with those taunts he would surely have finished the villain off at the first opportunity now short of giving up the plan and of the Emperor Palpatine moment where he basically goads the hero into killing him I will admit that this scene maybe struck me a little bit more because I've got a daughter who is exactly the same age as the heroes and combined with the little niggles that I have with the writing this basically turned the book for me from nah to nah. So overall it wasn't the best of experiences for me Obviously DNF in the book at 40% meant that I didn't get to see most of the vengeance of the book's title. It also meant that I didn't get to see whether the treasonous plot actually was carried through and if it did whether it was successful or not. And I also didn't really get to see much actual fantasy. What I did read in the opening 40% was completely devoid of any fantastical elements beyond the secondary world. For what it's worth, the secondary world itself did seem to be quite interesting with various elements of politics, religion, history, geography and so forth that would all hopefully be explored a little bit more in depth and developed on a little bit in the second half of the book. So I would say if you're looking for a no holds barred story of vengeance and you don't mind waiting a fair chunk of the book for that to start kicking in, this one could definitely be your thing. I myself do quite like a quest for vengeance in a story but this one just didn't do it for me. So those were my thoughts anyway on The Phantom's Vengeance by Marco Mitzi. Obviously it's not my favourite book of the six that I was allocated so this one for me will be a cut from the competition. If you've read A Phantom's Vengeance though, let me know in the comments down below what you thought about it. Did you have a different experience with it than I did? As usual in the description box below, I'll include a link to the Goodreads page for the book so you can read some reviews where the reader certainly did have a different experience to me. And there's also purchase links on that page if you're interested in trying out this book for yourself. There's also the link to Mark Lawrence's SPF 8 landing page and you can also find all of my social media and support the channel links. That's everything for today though, I hope you found this review useful, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video sometime soon, but until then as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books, bye for now.